Hello viewers, welcome to Know Your Eyes. Today our topic is the Virgins Basics. Now there are different kinds of Virgins like Convergence, Divergence, Vertical Virgins and Cyclovergence or Torsional Virgins. Now before going into this, let's delve into what is Virgins. Now these are some of the basic points to remember in virgins. Virgins is a binocular phenomena just like virgins. Only thing in virgins the two eyes are moving together in the same direction which is a conjugate movement. But in virgins the eyes are moving in a synchronous manner together but in the opposite direction which is called the disjugate movement. This virgins movement takes place in order to align the visual axis with the fixation target so that the image of the target falls on the correct corresponding retinal points and therefore the sensitive fusion can take place and we can appreciate a single image of that object. Now this virgins can be inward or outward. Inward means when the two eyes are moving together towards the nose that is the two eyes are adducting together so that is called positive virgins or convergence whereas if the two eyes are moving away from the nose then that is negative virgins or divergence. Virgins has been found to have lesser velocity than that of the virgins and virgins can also be voluntary or may uh, be influenced by the optomotor reflex. Best example of voluntary virgins is convergence. Convergence uh, can be voluntarily uh, be done by most of the individuals but convergence can also happen due to the optomotor reflex that we will be discussing in the latter slides. Now coming to the angle of convergence let us make it very simple it is nothing but the amount by which the two eyes are coming close together towards the eye uh, towards the nose in order to fix it at a particular object of interest. So that means it is the degree by which the two eyes are getting crossed to fix it at a particular object of interest then that amount of deviation is the angle of convergence. Angle of convergence depends on the fixation distance and the interpupillary distance. Fixation distance influences more than the interpupillary distance. The angle of convergence is inversely proportional to the fixation distance. If the object comes closer to the patient, the patient will try tend to converge more that means the angle of convergence will increase whereas if the object goes away from the patient, the angle of convergence will decrease. So that is how the angle of convergence is inversely proportional to the fixation distance which is also clear from the given picture where alpha 1 is greater than alpha 2 and interpupillary distance influences very little because in case of wider IPD we have seen that the patient tends to converge a little more as compared to that of narrower IPD okay but yes we also have seen convergence insufficiency in patients with wider IPD also so it is case dependent but usually in case of normal individual a wider IPD uh, tends to increase the angle of convergence a little in a patient. Now the degree of convergence is expressed in either of the two ways either in meter angle or in prism diopter. Meter angle is the reciprocal of the fixation distance. For example, if the object is situated 1 meter away from the patient, then how much amount of convergence is the patient making? 1 degree of convergence because it is the reciprocal of the 1 meter of distance which is giving you 1 degree. That means the patient is converging by 1 degree in order to fixate at a target which is 1 meter away from him. Now if I have to express the same in prism diopter then I have to multiply that meter angle value with the IPD of the patient. For example if the IPD of the patient is 60 millimeter then I have to convert that into centimeter first so that will become 6 centimeter so 1 into 6 is 6 so 6 prism diopter of convergence the patient is making. So that means for the patient to fixate a target which is 1 meter away from him he has to converge his eyes either by 1 degree or by 6 prism diopters. 
now apart from the voluntary factors there are many involuntary factors also leading to convergence the first is the tonic convergence tonic convergence actually helps us to keep our eyes parallelly aligned when we are looking at a distant object that is called the physiological position of rest and this happens because of the inherent innervational tone of the horizontal recti muscles okay now had this tonic convergence been not there then our eyes would have been totally diverged when we are looking at distance next is the fusional convergence fusional convergence also called the disparity convergence which helps us to overcome any bitemporal retinal image disparity like in my previous presentation the link i've already shared in the description box when the object is situated in front of the panum's fusional space then what happens that object causes bitemporal retinal image disparity which leads to crossed physiological diplopia or heteronymous diplopia whereas if the object is uh, far beyond the panum's fusional space then that leads to um, uncrossed diplopia or homonymous diplopia now if i talk about the heteronymous diplopia or the cross diplopia then that can be overcome by the positive fusional vergence which is the fusional convergence okay whereas the binasal retinal disparity is overcome by the negative fusional vergence so this fusional vergence is a very very important parameters in fact the most important parameters in convergence that we need to evaluate during any orthoptic examination next is the accommodative convergence accommodative convergence is that when we are looking at a near object our eyes are accommodating now during that accommodation our eyes are converging as well why because we know that both the ciliary muscles and the medial recti are supplied by the third cranial nerve okay so as a result these two phenomena are taking place together which is called the accommodative convergence reflex okay along with that there is another phenomena which is the which is called meiosis or pupil constriction taking place so these three together form the near triad or the synkinetic near reflex and the last one is the proximal convergence which is due to the awareness of the proximity of a near or a far object now the first important parameter in convergence is the near point of convergence which we not only should measure in orthoptic examination but also in our routine clinical practice npc is the closest point where maximum convergence is exerted and it is usually closer than near point of accommodation it is either measured with a raf ruler in case raf ruler is not there we can use a pen or a, a finger to measure it or we can also use a red green glass we must measure both the objective and the subjective npc objective is that which is measured by the examiner when the fixation target is pushed towards the patient's face then the examiner will have to keep a track on the virgin's movement of the patient so the point where the convergence of the patient's patient breaks is the objective npc subjective is where the patient himself is giving the feedback uh that at which point the fixation target appears double so that is the subjective npc repetition of the test procedure determines the effect of fatigue in the symptomatics usually we have seen that near point of convergence doesn't recede like near point of accommodation with age and the normal value of npc is usually within 6 to 12 if it is less than 6 then it signifies convergence excess if it is more than 12 it signifies convergence insufficiency why should we measure npc we often get patients at our clinic coming with different kinds of complaints like have getting headaches after a prolonged period of near work or getting some double vision after a few minutes of near work or uh, having blurred vision while doing the near work okay so different kinds of asthenopic symptoms the patient is facing but when we do the clinical examination we may see that the patient is absolutely having normal visual acuity both at distance and near maybe sometimes without correction also but still the patient is having these kinds of asthenopia so that time there is a high probability for the patient of having some virgins anomalies like convergence insufficiency or excess which can be confirmed with the help of the measurement of npc that's why it is very very important to measure the near point of convergence of such patients 
the next important parameter is the fusional virgins amplitude of the patient which is recorded as the blur break and recovery point for a particular target now this parameter is measured in order to assess the relative fusional virgins of the patient okay which means the maximum capability of the patient to retain a clear image and the limit is the first blur point so here what happens the virgins demand is gradually increased by increasing the strength of the prism and the point where the patient first appreciates the blur is the relative fusional virgins of the patient so here we basically see the maximum capability to retain the binocular single vision in the presence of the increasing virgins demand now as i have already mentioned before that the horizontal fusional virgins amplitude can be of two types one is positive another is negative in order to measure the positive fusional virgins we have to use the base out prism bar in the step virgins test so in case of positive fusional virgins the normal value is 15 to 20 base out for distance and uh, for near the normal value is 25 to 35 base out prism diopters whereas in case of negative fusional virgins reserve we have to use the uh, base in prism bar to measure it and in this case the normal value is 5 to 9 prism diopters base in for distance and for near it is 12 to 15 base in prism diopters and for vertical fusional virgins the normal value is 3 prism diopters base up and base down so hope i could make the concept of virgins and virgins parameters clear to you there are many other aspects in virgins that we have to know in details that i may be coming up with later on if you have any related queries or questions then kindly come up with them in the comment section below and if you like this video then please like share and subscribe so till then please take care of yourself thank you